Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Sierra Kazol, a PhD candidate at the University of Guelph. So Sierra, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me on the podcast today. Um, so I'm not too far from home. I grew up in a city just east of Toronto, and for the past seven years, I've been at the University of Guelph. Um, completed a degree in animal biology, um, finished that in 2020, and then started a um, graduate program with Dr. Leanne Huber at the university. Uh, since then, I've been working um, with swine, which I had previously no experience with. Like you, we know feeding pigs is a challenge. At Alltech, our proven specialty ingredients work to solve your toughest challenges. Whether it's combating mycotoxins, increasing feed efficiency, or just getting a few extra pigs per litter, Alltech's full line of trace minerals, enzymes, prebiotics, and other specialty ingredients are backed by science and real customer success. Start seeing maximized health, sustainability, and profitability in your pigs, and more free time for you by visiting alltech.com slash pig today. Gotcha. So I saw the study that you sent on increasing um, methionine in sow diets and looking at how that affected uh, nitrogen retention. And uh, would you mind sharing that study with us? Definitely. Um, so as we know, generally in swine diets, methionine is the second limiting amino acid. Uh, though it's interesting because the NRC recommendations for gestating and lactating gilts are now, um, the studies done, are now over 30 and 50 years old. Uh, so with that, Dr. Schieber had the idea to kind of dive further in and look at modern gestating gilts, um, given that those previous studies weren't using modern genetics. So they only used, say, less than 10 piglets. Uh, which we know the number of piglets affects uh, the requirements of the sow. So um, we've been looking at uh, different methionine levels to try and feeding first parity uh, gilts. Um, so we ranged the diets from uh, 70% of the NRC's current recommendation and then fed up until 130% of the current recommendations. Uh, to try and look at a break point at which the performance of the gilt was optimized during lactation. Uh, so we looked at different variables, uh, so piglet growth rate uh, as a factor to look at milk production, uh, sow performance, so body weight loss, uh, back fat change, as well as we know methionine's role in non-protein uses. So as metabolites, uh, we were looking at creatine and, um, and as well as homocysteine, uh, given its importance. Um, so we fed approximately 70 gilts um, throughout the lactation period, um, but we wanted to specifically look at and kind of pinpoint um, the requirements at the different stages of lactation, as we know those change um, depending on milk production and feed intake. So we looked at early lactation, so uh, from days five to nine, and then peak lactation from days 17 to 21. Uh, we did nitrogen balance uh, studies during those time periods. Uh, so we used nitrogen retention as a uh, marker to, kind of, to give us an idea of uh, protein retention in both the sow and in the milk. Uh, so we so we saw that generally in early lactation, the gilts were eating less than the feed allotment uh, based on the NRC uh, feeding curve. Uh, so with that, we saw breakpoint analyses showing that nitrogen retention was um, optimized above the NRC's current recommendation, whereas in peak lactation, when the gilts were eating a bit more, uh, we saw that the uh, breakpoints were at approximately where the NRC uh, is currently recommending. Um, 
And so this kind of gives us the idea that precision feeding and adjusting the diet for sows throughout lactation may offer benefit for milk production and piglet health. So just kind of like going back into like the importance behind uh, this concept. So what would you say briefly would be um, like the benefits behind nitrogen retention? Obviously, the more methionine they consume, that's an amino acid, thusly more nitrogen. Um, But how does the nitrogen exactly impact the health um, of the sow or the piglets or the growth of the piglets? And what is exactly the kind of like the mechanism behind that? So the, the nitrogen balance technique co- goes off of the kind of first limiting amino acid um, or limiting amino acid concept. So with the idea that as methionine is limiting, uh, more maternal protein is going to be mobilized to meet that requirement for methionine for milk production. So as maternal protein is mobilized, nitrogen excretion is going to increase. Gotcha. And I also saw um, from the results that in that later stage, um, that N2 stage, that as the SID methionine increased, the, and obviously the nitrogen intake increased, the excretion uh, tended to decrease, which was interesting. So that the retention there is obviously increasing. Um, but then when you looked at like the true milk protein, um, the true milk protein output, um, that increase, but then in terms of what you said, the maternal nitrogen decrease while that true milk protein increase. So thusly, um, kind of mobilizing some of those body sort resources. Um, but you said early on that like that N2 phase, um, the, um, uh, NRC recommendations, tended to be more accurate in that later stage. Um, they are more in line with your what your study suggested. Um, so with that um, mobilization of the resources of the nitrogen that they saw um, at the lower stages of methionine, so was it then just after the what the NRC's recommendation was that you started to see um, that total maternal nitrogen, or sorry, not the total, but the maternal nitrogen retention increasing because uh they then had like enough is that i mean that that was my kind of breakdown rendition of it but um is that kind of is that kind of how that works or was there more to that exactly so it it's interesting the gilts tended to as they the methionine content increased um milk production increased along with it um so we still see Um, maternal nitrogen retention um, going down as they were increasing milk production, um, given that they were putting more of their um, uh, amino acids from the diet into milk rather than into um, protein synthesis for their own tissues. Gotcha. Interesting. So my other question, um, so what would be like the next steps for this uh, line of research? Do you guys plan to do any more research in this field? Yes, uh, definitely. There's um, more to see, uh, more to come. Um, so future projects uh, look like um, feeding both dl and HMTBA, uh, both with and without cysteine, to kind of see um, how cysteine affects methionine requirements. Um, as we know that methionine can be used for cysteine synthesis, um, so to look at how this can impact recommendations for the NRC and future requirement estimates. Anamin, international supplier of precision minerals. When most trace minerals are only bioavailable, Anamin trace elements are also active in the digestive tract and permit secure piglets' gut health. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all that, uh, all the results of the study with us. Thanks for having me. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, 
feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.